I'm going to show you how we can use the Superbase CLI to introspect your Postgres schema and automatically generate TypeScript definitions. We can then pass those along to our Superbase client and get end-to-end -end type safety across client, server, and database. Let's get into it. Here I have a to-do app that I've been building out over the last few videos. Check out the playlist link in the description if you want to follow along for that journey. But we now have a pretty significant app that's using all of the new Next.js app router things. So we have client components, we have async server components, we have server actions, we have route handlers, and we have middleware. But even though this is a TypeScript app, I actually have very little type safety. And I'm actually doing some very naughty things with any because I just didn't have time to think about it. So let's get Superbase to think about it for us. We can use MPX to run the Superbase CLI, and the first thing we want to do is log in. This is going to ask us if we're happy to install this package, which I am. And once that's finished, we need to generate an access token from this URL. So I'm going to copy this one over to my browser. I'm going to generate a new token. The name of this one is just going to be to do app. This can be whatever you'd like. And then we click generate token. And now we'll see this value, which we can copy and paste this back over in the Superbase CLI and you should see finished Superbase login. And so now we can use the Superbase CLI to perform actions on behalf of our user. So to generate TypeScript definitions for one of our projects, we can run MPX Superbase gen types TypeScript. We then need to provide a project dash ID. And so this one can come from our Superbase project itself. So we can go to settings and see our reference ID here under project settings. So we can copy that and paste it into our command. And if we just run this, it will dump our database types into the console, but that's not very helpful. So let's instead use the greater than symbol to write this value to a file. And the file we want to write it to is lib slash database dot types dot ts. And it's telling me no such file or directory exists. So we can create that lib folder by saying mkdir and then lib. And now when we run that same command to generate our TypeScript types, everything is all good. And if we go back to our project, we'll see we have this new lib folder and then our new file, which contains all of our database types from Superbase. And so now we just need to find anywhere in our application where we're calling one of our create client functions from the auth helpers and tell it about those database types. And so if we have a look at the type that we get back from this function, it's a Superbase client, but it doesn't really know anything about the structure of our database. But if I tell it about our database and we can import that from at slash lib slash database dot types, we can see the type for our Superbase client is now much more detailed. It knows we have a to do's table and it knows all of the columns that are available. Now, just to keep things organized, I like to explicitly say that I'm importing a type and I also like to leave a line between regular imports and imports of types. We can now take this one step further and declare a type for a to do, which is equal to database and then the public public field and then tables and then our to do's table and then our row. Now, if we have a look at this to do, it gives us all of those fields. So we can now fix the type for our to do's array by saying this is a to do array. Now, if we have a look at our to do's, they're properly typed and we barely had to write any TypeScript at all. Now we're probably going to have to import this database and declare this to do type a few places throughout our code. So I like to create a new file under the app directory called global.d.ts. I can then move that import and the type declaration for our to do into this file. And then if we wrap our to do in declare global, this will make it globally available across our entire Next.js app. And so if we were to save this one, go back to real time to do's, get rid of our declaration for our to do, we can see that to do type is still available and our to do's are correctly typed. So we can do that for our database as well by using an import alias to say we want to import database as db. And then we want a global type for database, which is equal to db. We also need to change our to do type to use db instead. Now, if we save this file, go back to real time to we can get rid of this import for our database type and our Superbase client is still correctly typed without needing to import anything. So now we could just do a find and replace and say anywhere where we're saying client with a capital C and then trying to call a function are all the different times we're creating a new Superbase client. And so we can open this up to add our replace and we want to replace this with client with our database type and then make sure we keep that open parentheses. Now we can click this one to replace all and yes, we want to replace all occurrences. And now in our route handler, we have a correct Superbase type. In our server action, we have a correct Superbase type and it's even picked up the title is not a string. So we can wrap this form data dot get in a string and TypeScript has saved our butts once again. We'll see page.tsx is still lit up red and that's because the type on real time to do specifies 
that this is definitely an array, whereas to do's could be null. So we can say either pass to do's or if that's null, pass an empty array. And TypeScript is still not happy because real time to do's returns an array rather than a JSX element. And so we can fix that in real time to do's. Down here where we're mapping over all of our to do's, we just need to wrap this in a fragment. And we've got one more naughty any here, which we can now say is definitely of type to do. And now we have full type safety over our entire Next.js app. So that's in client components, server components, server actions, route handlers, and middleware. But there's one crucial step we need to set up first, and that's to configure Superbase auth to store sessions in cookies rather than local storage. If you're not sure why, I recommend you check out this video right here, where we learn all about the new Next.js app router, as well as Superbase sessions and why we need to store them in cookies. But until next time, keep building cool stuff.